Hey guys, happy Halloween. Today we're going to talk about Halloween archetypes. What we are afraid of. Common symbols in Halloween that still trigger fear in us, even though we don't really believe in them anymore. I think that's what's interesting. is very common for people to be afraid of ghosts. I swear I'm not talking about myself here. Very common for people to be afraid of ghosts, even though they know scientifically, philosophically, ghosts or anything supernatural doesn't exist. Why would we be afraid of it? Well, I think it's because these symbols that emerge around Halloween are are symbols that we're afraid of because they mean something psychological about who we are. They are archetypes. All an archetype is is a pattern. If you see something enough between individuals, among different individuals, you go, okay, here's a pattern. This says something culturally. This says something mimetically. Now, if you see common patterns between different cultures, especially if those cultures don't interact too much, now you can start to think, okay, maybe we see something here genetically. It's an expression not of who we are, but of what we are. And here's common themes, here's common archetypes that, that spring up between interculturally uh, and they show up at Halloween and we're still afraid of them even though we don't really believe in them. So Halloween archetypes is essentially common fears, what they mean about us, and maybe we'll even go through how to solve them a bit. Here's, of course, uh, an archetype of mine. What just happened there? I think I just flipped out. Here's, of course, a, a, a fear of mine. I say archetype. Here's a fear of mine, the Blair Witch, of course, and this will... Yeah, I saw this movie in high school. Scared the crap out of me. Especially that part when the figurines show up in the forest and they're everywhere. Just that little subtle, it's very spooky. We're going to talk about what that means. Um, here's more Blair Witch figurines. Okay, so the first archetype is the ghost. This represents typically an unresolved issue with the dead. It doesn't have to be with the dead person necessarily. It is here for Ebenezer Scrooge and Jacob Marley but just any unresolved issue from the past. And by past, I mean where you hurt someone or where somebody else hurts you and that issue was unresolved, right? It's not the fact that you hurt somebody or they hurt you. It's that the issue lingers. It was never resolved properly. Here we have Jacob Marley talking to Ebenezer Scrooge about his, his penny pinching and taking advantage of people financially <laughs> or whatever socialist you know, theme is to the Christmas Carol. You know, it was made by commies, right? Uh, and um, so, yeah, it's, it's where you hurt somebody or where you still continue to hurt somebody because that issue is unresolved. So, yeah, the example could be, sure, you, you take advantage of somebody financially. Or it could be you are taken advantage of financially. And that issue has gone unresolved. So... You look at, to resolve this issue, what you do is you look at um, your part in whatever the issue is, in whatever the harm is, whether that harm was done to you or whether you did it to somebody else. You look at your responsibility in it and communicate that in some way to the person. If that person is dead, in the case of Jacob Marley, then you imagine right, your, your brain has the solution for you. You imagine the solution by having a ghost of them up here, which is what happens, of course, to Ebenezer Scrooge here. So yeah, unresolved issue. Next theme, next archetype uh, of Halloween is the jack-o'-lantern. This represents a constant avoidance or purgatory, just un an unresolved issue in itself. An issue is an issue precisely because it's, it's unresolved, and that's what the jack-o'-lantern uh, represents. The origin, it's from a Irish, it's of Irish origin, and it's this guy named Jack who went around drinking, stealing, fighting, gambling, just cheating people out of their money. Uh, you know, of course, it has to be you know, uh, alcoholic. It, it, everything Irish goes back to alcoholism. I mean, not to be uh, racist or anything, but whenever I get a client who's Irish to some degree, I don't even listen to them. I just think the, the root is alcoholism. Either they're an alcoholic or they have been affected by alcoholism in the family. That's just how it goes. So this guy, Jack, he lies, cheats, and steal. Um, and I, I think he even cheats out. It's like Satan goes to get him, and he even cheats out Satan out of something. right? Um, 
but then he dies and he, he can't go to heaven of course he tries to go to hell satan doesn't let him in so he's left to wander in um you know his spirit is wandering of course it's very symbolic there's a pumpkin as a head a vegetable at a hollowed out vegetable you have a vegetable head with a light on the inside or sometimes he carries the lantern and it's like you're not really there you're not really conscious so this this is a guy who goes around not fully conscious unaware constant in constant avoidance and of course how to resolve this is is you have to look at the issue that you're really avoiding and you have to look at your life too you know if five years pass and things aren't really going in the right direction or there isn't a noticeable difference of the last five years or even one year well guess what you're avoiding something that this is very tricky because people can be busy yet still in constant avoidance so they never really resolve the issue they're very much like the jack-o'-lantern you know yeah, like you have a, you might as well have a vegetable for a head, and there's some consciousness there, but it's not real consciousness. It's just a light, just one candle. And um, so you got to look at what you're avoiding. Typically, you have to talk through. You have to to begin. To, if you're not sure what you're avoiding, uh, you got to begin to talk through the facts of your life. You do an anamnesis, as Jung says. And here we have another depiction. Oh, that's kind of small, but whatever. It's another depiction of um. He just has a turnip. It, it just it, pumpkin is one iteration of this, but just any vegetable here, it's a turnip. And then we go to witches. This is of course representative of the feminist, which represents resentment that society has towards women. What does society? What do you not accept about women? Typically, it's a the woman's uh, sexual nature will we resent that women are sexual much more sexual than men are and we can't accept that about women so in, invariably what happens is women are secluded from society or women will begin to seclude themselves because they can't fit in if people don't accept them they're not really accepting of themselves otherwise they would fit in but you know it works both ways yeah, especially here in Sleeping Beauty. I mean, this is Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty when she shows up in the beginning when Aurora is born and you know, she puts a curse on Aurora. That that curse is when Aurora is 16, she will die. When Aurora becomes sexual, when Aurora, when Aurora becomes a woman, she will die. This issue, this issue of repressed sexuality, she will die because now she is a sexual being at 16. Um... And that issue isn't really accepted. So at least a part of her will die. But of course, Meriwether comes in and she can't uh, reverse the curse, but she can uh, lessen its intensity. And, and rather than Aurora dying when she's 16, she just falls asleep. She becomes unconscious. Rich with symbolism. And of course, how to resolve this is you manage your resentments towards women. Um, Spoiler, every resentment you have towards women or anybody else is a resentment you have about yourself. Typically, resentment uh, for women, when, especially when men have resentment towards women, it's they resent the fact that they're not very sexual, the man is. So maybe, you know, if, if I, <laughs> I go back to how I was afraid of the Blair Witch in high school, was that a silent admission of how I didn't have a girlfriend? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so there is uh, Maleficent. And then we have um, the sea witch from uh, from Little Mermaid. I have a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter here, so I've been watching Sleeping Beauty and Little Mermaid. And, and of course, you know, Ursula the sea witch and Little Mermaid is... Um, she gets people when they're weak and destroys them, and that's, of course, what a resentment does. Again, it's like this repressed part of it. The individual as it's represented in society and, and you get the, these ugly creatures that live in the outskirts are they real i mean maybe not literally real but they're effectively real and that we're still very much afraid of them right? I mean, the, the, these symbols the, these symbols will show up 
Similar to witches, we have trolls, which is like just the male version of the witch. These are the MGTOW guys. This re represents our resentment towards men. Um, society's resentment towards men. This is uh, the troll from Harry Potter, who of course shows up at Halloween. I don't know if you remember. And here we have Mo in The Simpsons. Of course, if there was a MGTOW guy in The Simpsons, it would be Mo. And in the Halloween episode, he, he becomes a troll. And same thing issue here, right? You manage your resentment towards men. Uh, usually has something to do with, uh, you know how it shows up very well is uh, the, uh, well, actually mean. Actually, A-K-S-H, actually. This is the guy who just has uh, an annoying argument for everything. He may be right, but it's just kind of annoying. It's like this resentment that uh, you got to be right. You got to always bring up facts and, and be, you know, disagreeable in these little ways. You know, we're trying to cross the bridge here and you jump up from underneath and, and try to grab us. Uh, similar. Zombies. This, of course, represents people who are ideologically possessed. You cannot get through to them. You cannot reason with them in any way. You have a different uh, point of view, and it, you might as well just be a walking dead from your own perspective. You may as well be, uh, you know, part of the walking dead. And this is the scariest, I mean, definitely the scariest thing from my childhood is being, having to convince a robot that uh, who was programmed to kill you a robot that was programmed to kill you you had to convince him to not kill you well it'd be impossible and every argument that you threw his way he would just turn that around in his head and say yeah that's that's what somebody who needs to be killed by me would say it doesn't matter you know and any argument how clear how articulate it was how analytical it, it doesn't matter you know he wasn't going to listen and so kirk and in, in the changeling i mean this isn't a halloween theme here but Kirk and the Changeling or you know there's about five other Star Trek episodes like this how do they get the best of a computer or a robot slash computer that's trying to kill them destroy them well you need to introduce a paradox right zombies computers things that only work with a one track mind they can't deal well with paradox and you as a conceptual being, you do deal well with the paradox. And that's exactly, I think, what's symbolic here in the paradox is you need to be conceptual. You need to be able to understand two seemingly conflicting point of views at the same time and understand how they're both true, even though they, they seem to be conflicting from the, uh, from the perceptual level, rather from the conceptual level, you put them in their proper context is what I mean by that. And they both, they both make sense. Uh, you know, part of that is going to be relating with somebody, you know, if somebody's out to destroy you, if you can relate with them and see, yeah, I see where you're coming from yet yeah, not to say that they're right. Of course they're wrong. If they're trying to destroy you, but it's, it's on you to destroy them, to not engage, right? Cause if you just engage with the argument, you're going, you're going to lose. It's a robot. It's a zombie. You need to rise up above it conceptually. And, um, also, I think very similar with clowns. Clowns is a common theme because I, I think these are like happiness, emotional zombies. You're just happy no matter what. We know that's not true, right? We know that's a product of your denial, which is why it's so scary, even though you're smiling all the time. Well, how could you, right? Because it's not, it's not true. And then, okay, we have two more here, vampires. Here we have Gary Oldman. In Bram Stoker's Dracula, these are, of course, the narcissists. They live off the the um. Yeah, they 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 suck blood from living. Right, you need to live off of people who are living. You can't subsist on your own. You need to uh, be a predator on others in order to live. But narcissists can get away with it because, I mean, obviously, look at Gary Oldman. He, he Gary Oldman. He's a total babe, first of all, and he's cool. Right? So you go, oh, well, this, yeah, this narcissist is sucking energy from me, but look how cool they are. Look how exciting their life is. Look how attractive they are. I, I want to be swept up in that. I want to be a part of that. 
So this ultimately goes from you being unable to validate your own existence on its own. Uh, which is why I think here uh, Edward Cullen in the Twilight series was such a powerful sex symbol because he he was aware of the fact that be, he was a vampire. But, but, but he was aware that he's a bad guy because of that. And so he had this psychological issue. He had this narcissism. But he was aware of it. And he was aware that it can hurt somebody who is living. The girl in Twilight. I think her name's Belle, right? Bella? So he tried to keep her away. It's like, yeah, I have this emotional issue. I'm, in effect, I'm more aware of it than you are. And that's why you need to stay away, because I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you with my psychological issue. And he became the greatest sex symbol of the past maybe 15 years. And then guys say, well, I can't talk about my emotions with women. That'll make me look stupid. That'll make me look weak. Yeah, probably in the way that you would talk about emotions, because you, don't, you aren't aware of them. But when you are aware of them, if you, if you have an emotion, if you have an emotional issue that you're more aware of than the girl is aware of it, I mean, it helps if it's like a cooler emotional issue, like uh, having a violent explosive temper rather than, you know, watching porn all day. Um, some, you know, look, some emotional issues are cooler than others. Then you, uh, yeah, and then you communicate that to the girl and then you even communicate it from the place of, look, maybe you should just stay away. I'm not really ready for a relationship. You know, I really like you, but uh, you know, I'm not really ready for this. Psh, come on. Come on, guys. So how do you resolve that? That's a side point. So yeah, you resolve this issue, as I indicated before, is you develop a boundary, right? You, um, you Usually this is repressed anger you have because you're unclear about what your needs are, so you have repressed anger. Um, and then once you can communicate that anger better, you have a stronger boundary. You, you are able to validate yourself on your own. You don't need to be around anybody cool in order to feel cool even if you're not cool. So when Gary Oldman shows up or uh, Robert Pattinson, however dreamy they may be, you, you're like, okay, I, you know, I'm not, uh, not going to uh, play along here because right? I know I'm ultimately going to lose this, this game. And then the final archetype of Halloween is, of course, the skeleton. And if you've watched two and a half seconds of any of my videos, this harken back, harkens back to the bone ceremony. Very common in indigenous tribes. Again, speaks to the, the genetic aspect of the skeleton. You, you take drugs. You know, when you're a 13-year-old boy, part of your initiation ceremony is you take enough drugs where you rise above yourself and see yourself. You see yourself as a skeleton as the bones you ultimately are. I mean, that's what's so scary about skeletons is you're looking at them and you go, this is me. This is what I look like. So when skeletons show up, as they do here in the Karate Kit, also on Halloween, they reveal the hero to be who he is. Kind of a puss, ultimately, at least at this part of his journey. Um... So why are you afraid of skeletons? Is because you can't really look at yourself, right? You're facing death. You're facing what you will look like one day. That, that's what you're going to look like. That's what you look like now, right? But that's what you... So it's like a deathbed. It's like a magnified, concrete example of being on a deathbed. So looking at a skeleton is like, oh yeah, what am I really avoiding? What, when I'm on my deathbed, is going to give me a panic attack because I'm avoiding it now? And when skeletons show up in our life and the, you know, in the guise of these Halloween decorations, that that's our opportunity to see that, that you know, that's, that's, you know, one way we can um, become more aware of, of what we're avoiding, you know, very much like the jack-o'-lantern, just constant avoidance, constant lying, and not even lying, you know, I mean, most people aren't bald-faced liars like that, but just the squirming. Just the squirming out of a situation, right? Very, very common in avoidance. So that's, you know, why we have Halloween. That's why we'll continue to celebrate it, because there's always some aspect of ourselves that we're going to be afraid of. And, you know, no matter how much we work on these issues, it's always going to be there. It's okay. It's not about resolving the issue. As Edward Cullen, 
you know, indicates. It's about can you relate with the issue and develop relationships with other people based on the fact that you have that issue. You know, and that's really powerful. And, you know, that's what I can help you with here. If you want to know more about the therapy that I do, joinanimus.com slash feature. There's a video there that explains more if you are, in fact, interested Thank you guys. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you think there's maybe a few archetypes of Halloween that I missed. I'm sure I did. And yeah, I'll leave it there. Remember that when you celebrate Halloween, you ultimately celebrate your own fear.